Okay, so how do you use one of these writing assignments? Um, now, I'm first thing you get you see, when you get here, you'll see all these little um, icons, green and red and yellow, all over. These are comments left by previous people. Now, if this were a PC, they wouldn't be squares because mm, I'm using a Mac here, and Mac has got problems with its fonts, and I don't understand it. Someone can help me if they would like, but um, these are actually comments, and they, if it was a PC, this comment would point at what was being talked about. So, um, yeah, you can click as many comments as you like, and um, do things like like them, and, um, you know, see who liked what, and things like that, um, or get rid of them. And so, what will happen on the left here is, in, in this purple area, is that the comments will get built up. And you can drag them around. You can do whatever you want over there. Um, every comment's replies will be underneath of it. So if you yourself want to reply to something, you hit the R, type in something. Um, you can upload an image from your computer if you want. Um, I don't have any images, so I'm not going to do that. And then you just hit apply. So reply. You can also change the nature of your comments. So if you normal is green, if you're answering a question, you would use blue, but the normal is green. If you're asking a question, make it yellow. And if you're complaining or criticizing, make it red. That's the way it works. And I'm just making a normal comment, so I'll make it green and hit reply and then you can see my comment there under one reply. There it is. Okay, so um, I can trash edit this comment um, by writing something new in it. New, and then hit edit. Well, again, Mac is throwing me for a... Okay, or I can delete it, and that's the end of that. Okay. On the right side here is all the resources that you're going to use to complete this assignment. And they go down a long ways. Now, at the very bottom, you can see the time. This is seconds, minutes, hours, days. So I've been at work on this particular assignment for five days, zero hours, eight minutes, and 50 seconds. Huh. I've been here a little while. Um, if you beat the top time, Zelda here got one day in 20 minutes, then of course you'll, your name will go there and you'll get three free answers if you are first place, two if you're second, one if you're first, if you're third place. Um, so try to do that. That's the goal is to get really good at this so that you can go fast through these assignments. So how do you do an assignment? Well, you, if you think you know the answer right off the bat, you type your word in and hit tab and bingo it turned blue which means from our chart from our color coding chart blue you can see means all, everything's correct perfect now if i had done something pretty good like here i'll put romanum you can see that i got at least my ending macrons were correct that's almost good what i was missing here was a a so if i can make that a Macron A, and it'll always put it at the end, so you may have to delete a bit. All right, so, oh yes, I also forgot my Control O. Control O, Control A, now it works. Hit Tab and bingo, now it's become blue. All right, you don't have to make everything blue. You don't even have to make everything green. As long as you get at least the letters right, you can turn the assignment in. Here, Europa should have a long A on the end. It doesn't, so it turned yellow. If I wanted to make it right, then I could do that. Oh, I forgot. I guess it also has an O. Okay. So, as a teacher, I would like you to aim for green because it is important that you learn the macrons at the end of the word. It is not so important to know the macrons at the start of the word. The O here, for instance, oops, that's not so important. 
I'm using big gloves here, so that's why I'm not a good typer. That's to protect my fingers. Hopefully your fingers are not as bad as mine. <laughs> all right, so anyways, once you get all of this done, then you can go down and submit it at the bottom. Um, or if you get most of it done, more than at least more than 10%, then you can submit it and the assignment will say submit assignment for grading? Yes. Sorry, at least 10% of the blanks must be filled in in order to submit a writing assignment. Oh, okay. All right. So I got to fill in more blanks. Now I'm not going to fill this in right off the top, but I have a secret and you can have a secret too if you complete a lot of these assignments, especially if you get first, second, or third place. I'm going to use my free answers because you can see I have way more free answers than you will ever have. And I can do that because I'm a teacher. But so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now you would have, see I have 793. I'm just going to put my cursor into the blank and then hit tab to go to the next blank. Or I could have clicked out of the blank like that. And you see it's filling in the correct answer for me. So I'm going to do all this where you can't see it. And so now I've got at least 10% of the answers correct. And now I can go back down and submit the work. And bingo, up comes the message. I can't read that. That's Latin. What do I do? Okay, so I click the English, and now I can read it. And you can see some of the... It said basically that they're going to sum, accept my submission, but a teacher is going to have to look at it, because you can see I left a whole bunch of blanks empty. So at this point, um, if I was really stuck at this point, then it would be time to go on to another assignment. But there's something else that you can do. Here, let me reload the page. You can get help. There's lots of blue resources over here to assist you to get help. Um, abbreviations is for if you see any grammatical term that you don't understand, like what does the word declench mean? It says, type control F to find your term. Now, control F is the standard find, and so I'll type in declension. Ah, there, there's declension. Other things you can do is, if you don't know what noun is, well, just click on it. That's a brown link. Brown means it's an internal link to somewhere else on this page, or sometimes you want to just hover over it. Um, or, I'm sorry, on this page, blue things are supposed to be hovered over. You know, that's some... So it says... Silly, this category is too broad in general. It's probably too small for you to see it. You can also click blue things, like the blue links, and that will take you to somewhere else to explain stuff. So that's the first thing. You can use the abbreviations. Next thing is you can use the grammar charts, G. So let's go there. Now, this slider at the top tells what chapter you're in. I'm just going to put it in 34 so that I can see everything. Huh, should have removed these two. That's strange. Let's try again. There we go. There it goes. Just sometimes JavaScript it doesn't do things right, so you just want to do it again to see if it can work. Okay, so this is your grammar charts. Now, if you use Lingua Latina per se Estrada, they probably tell you not to use these charts. Um, but almost everywhere else they are used, and I kind of think they're kind of useful. Um, I think you should memorize these. Now this works really good if you're a memorizing person, a brainy person. Um, of course, this is not as good as knowing the Latin in your eyesight, in your ear, and on your tongue. But this would be putting the Latin into your brain. Um, of course, this is not realistic because in ancient times, no Roman person had charts memorized in their brain. Um, this is supposed to be spontaneous, not memorized. So instead of using these charts too much as a, as a crutch, it would be better if you listen in for the distinctive sound of every word and try to associate that sound with the correct circumstance in which it is used in the sentence. Maybe as, if it's nominative, always as the subject. If it's accusative, then always as the object. And you can see over here the circumstance explained, like of blank. Genitive is always used for possession. Dative for 
um, indirect object or the two or four. All right, so all these charts are up here. Um, feel free to scroll through them. You'll see uh, the that they have these gray circles with a number in them. Oops, <laughs> there we go, gray circle. That's a, sometimes in the work assignments you'll see a number one like that. That's in reference to chart one. Now this down here is chart two, so get used to that. Um, if you see a circle like that, then think to yourself, oh, that's referring, if I, that's referring to this chart. So if you need to go look things up, then it would be wise to go click on G for grammar in your um, resources. Okay, so next up, chapter word lists. This is your vocab for the whole assignment. Um, you can see it's color coded, and so if you if you're in chapter three, then you need know, need to know everything up to the end of chapter three, and you also need to know what's in the boxes next to chapter three. Aum, aam, id, ilmum, ilam, all of this stuff in here. Another good thing you can use in here is the Control F, find. So, you know, if you don't need to find a word quick, hit Control F. Um, you can see these. Some of these words are fully colored, like ovus. That means it's feminine because it's pink. If you can't see that, blue is masculine and gray is neuter. So those are your three genders. Orange is for verbs, and black is for other kinds of words, like in this case, an adverb. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, practice vocab is where you will. If you're trying to work through this assignment and you're finding, oh gee, I keep having to look up every word down at the bottom, and yes, I do give you all the words down at the bottom down here. All, every assignment will have, every writing assignment will have all the words at the bottom with their meaning. So if you want to know how to say first in Latin, you look it up in alphabetical order, and right next to it you see primus. Now, of course, you have to use the right form of primus, not the wrong form. Um, but okay, so like I don't know empire, I'll go look up empire. There it is. Oh yeah, it's imperium. Okay, so I can put an imperium right there. All right, but if you're finding yourself having to go down and look at the bottom and then go back up and look at the bottom and go back up, you know, you're going to have to do this I, something like a million times in this assignment, which is going to take a long time. So a better plan, hopefully, you'll decide that it's better to actually memorize this vocab so that you don't have to keep looking stuff up, so that you can just type imperium space and go on. Huh, how nice that is. Okay, so how are you going to do this? Well, you got to learn it. you got to memorize it. And that's what this next thing, practice vocab, is for. Um, practice vocab will take you to um, one of four lists. You can either use no macrons or macrons. Now, what is A and B? Well, if you looked over on your assignment, um, this chapter has a dividing line in it, right there. See the dividing line? 1 to 10 are above, and 6 to whatever are below. Who numbered these things? Gee. Okay, so this is list A, above the dividing line, and this is list B, below the dividing line. So if I find that I need to practice more of list A, including this box, then, okay, so then I better click the top one. Sometimes in the later chapters, you'll even get a list C, but anyways. So list A, I'll click Macrons. It's always better to pick Macrons when you're just learning it, because if you want to play one of the games like Gravity, it's a real annoyance to be typing Macrons. So in that case, you would want to use the no Macrons list. So if I want to play the game with list A, then I would click here. But if I just want to learn list A to begin with, then I would click Macron to right here. Okay, so um, these are all, this is Quizlet, and you can see we're on Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata, list 1A, Macrons. Nice. And this is a list of all the, th all the words with their meanings. Now you could use this list, but much better is flashcards. Okay, so when you go to flashcards, what you want to do is you want to click the options and you want to make sh show advanced options and make sure both audios are on 
and then you want to let's make it English first okay yeah English all right and try it again hit play quiz quiz as Rex okay so the English you see you can read the English but it shares the sentence. It says the Latin sentence demonstrating the word. So hopefully, um, now remember that, because on the syllabus, a listening assignment, like right here, listening A and B, would be using this sentence on this side of the card. Oops. Not cur. This sentence right here. And now, I don't use the rest of these, write, spell, test, match. Gravity's pretty good. Um, I like the old classic style of gravity. They used to make a link to that. Um, but anyways, those are pretty much the only things that you're going to use to memorize the words. Um, so you can practice vocab. Tutorials is nothing yet. Um, at some point I'll make a page with all these help videos, and then that will be in tutorials. Course contents. Course contents is the list rubric of everything that you're going to do chapter by chapter. So you can see stuff ahead of time. Um, that's all. Course contents is really useful for deciding in advance, oh, do I want to do writing assignment A, B, or C? Well, gee, I don't know the name of what are each of these about. Well, you can go to the course contents and see, oh, A is generation of the gods, B is the Latin alphabet, and C is the Greek alphabet. So those that's the topics that each of those stories will be talking about. All right, what else can you use? Uh, phone a friend. When our messaging system on this site gets up, then you'll be able to use that to go directly to the procurator to talk to a friend. And then you've also already seen how free answer works where you just click into a blank and out of a blank and it gives you the correct answer. Now you're going to only start with 15 free answers, which is not much. So you can't rely on free answers. Free answers are meant to be just a help later if you get stuck on something really hard. Um, it's not something that you're supposed to be able to do in a whole assignment with. Okay, next set panel you've already seen much of how to use. Um, this is where you select whether it's going to grade all Macrons or no Macrons. Really, you don't want this. I shouldn't have even included this. You should really always use all Macrons because this setting will grade will give it make it come back with an answer of blue, green, or yellow. If I had it here on yellow, then if you get it right, it would always be yellow. It would always come back yellow. Even if you answered it all correctly at the blue level of accuracy, it would still get shown as yellow. The only reason you would ever use yellow down here is if your teacher um, is just like monitoring you and testing you and wants all the students in the room to hit the bare minimum standard and wants to be able to check at one glance. That's why you would do that. Um, additionally, if you're colorblind, because like 10% of men are, then you can hit the colorblind check mark checkbox, and there's another colorblind blind check box up here under, up there. Um, you can see it changed the comment colors when I clicked this one. If you want to have some fun, change your page color to something cool and different. Um, I forgot to say about comments. Comments. Now, this is the place where you can. Filter out. If, the, if this assignment has too many comments and you don't want to see them all, um, you can filter them out. Like, for instance, I can select, let's only see comments with greater than one likes. Click the check box. Well, it should have shown the number right here of how many there are. I'll have to go debug that. But you can see it took all the comments off the screen except the three that are have likes on them. And so I hide the top panel. See, this top panel can be toggled like that. So you can see that, yeah, each one of these does have more than one like. Okay, so get rid of these. Um, so there, this is the way that you can filter comments. You can look at only the official comments by people like me, or you can look at teachers' comments by people who have been verified as teachers, or um, students' comments 
we don't have classes yet, at some point you'll be able to do that. Or you can filter a comment out by a certain person with a certain name um, by typing that name in there. Um, as for the rest, you know, comments within the last week, things like that. So that's all the stuff you can do there. Um, all right, keep moving. Um, file options. Okay, so if I get a little bit done, let's write in something crazy here. Oh, it turned orange. I got it wrong. All right, I want to stop working here and save it for later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save work. Okay, if you don't get an error message, then the work was successfully saved. Hooray! Okay, so it's saved. Then I can um, close this down. Europa is what I'm on here, which is 1A, assignment 1A. Okay. All right, so now let's go back and hit assignment 1A again. And it's all empty. Now I want to load my work, so I hit there, and there's only one assignment loaded here. Now I could delete it. You can only save five of each assignment. I could delete it, but I think I just want to click on it and load it. And there you see it put in my stuff. Now by clicking into it, it checked it. One other thing you can do though is use this check. I could have used, instead of clicking into it, I could have used the check whole page button and it would have clicked the whole page all at once from top to bottom. Um, you probably would use this also. You could also like check, test yourself and um, turn off error checking by putting it on select. Oh boy. Now when we type stuff and click on, it says tip, select a difficulty level from the drop-down menu. It's talking about, when we get to it, it's talking about right here. This is the drop-down menu. But I don't want to do that. I just want to type without it telling me whether I got it right or wrong. So I'm going to click stop notifying me with these pop-ups. Okay, your preference is now set in local storage. Thanks. Okay, so now I can go through typing my guesses and some of them will be right and some of them will be wrong and then once I'm, I've had it all then I can turn error, error checking back on okay make it blue and now I'm going to check the whole page at once and let's see what happens notice all these are white they haven't been checked but I hit check whole page at once and bang it told me that the first four were wrong orange, yellow was barely right and I got two absolutely right with, but of course that was easy because they didn't have any macrons. So if I wanted to fix this stuff, I could type control A. So that's the next thing we probably should go into. How do you type macrons? So you type control, control A, E, let's do it again. Control E, uh-oh. Oh, that's right. Control E doesn't work. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's try control I, O, U, Y. Bingo. And if I wanted to capitalize them, I hit control shift. There we go. Yeah, these things are called macrons over the top. So control shift A. Now remember, E doesn't work. Control shift I, O, U, Y. Um, now, how do you make E? Well, or better yet, why didn't I make E work? Well, the way you make E is control semicolon. So on your keyboard, it goes J, K, L, semicolon. So control semicolon will give you an E, or control shift semicolon will give you a capital E. So everything is like normal except for E, you have to use the semicolon instead of E in order to make a, um, so that's your pinky finger. So why did I do this? Well, the reason I did this was because you look at E on your keyboard and it's right between what two letters? W and R, right. And both of those, if you accidentally hit them while you're pressing Control, Control W would destroy this whole tab. You would lose everything. It's like pressing X. And Control R is reload. So that would also destroy the whole tab. Whoa, you don't want to do that. On a Mac, it's actually Command R. So it's safer on a Mac. On a Mac, you wouldn't need to worry about this. So 
the danger was if you were trying to hit control control E your finger would miss and you would lose all your work now if you had saved it that wouldn't be a problem but it's still an annoyance so that's why I decided no more we're not going to do control E for E we're going to do control semicolon but let that be a warning to you because if you are careless and you hit control W bam it's gone <gasps> so don't let that happen to you. Alrighty, let's go back to what we had. Right, Latin.org. Alright, here we are again. Okay, so what else do we have? Other resources to assist you. Other resources to assist you are down here in the yellow. Um, you can click on these yourselves, yourself, but the quick dictionary is Whitaker's words. That's one of the best, that is the best, in my opinion, fast, best Latin dictionary on the planet. So I hit zoom and it gives me all the stuff that I need to know. Um, big dictionary is the Perseus, the chart Lewis and Short dictionary on the Perseus.tufts website. This is awesome. Um, you can see up top, these are the letters of the alphabet in the top row. So I could click on, you know, S, and then, then once you're at the correct letter over here, then you go to the second row and find the part that you want to, the part of the S section of the dictionary that you want to go to. Okay, but anyways, once you click on one, then the bottom row has individual words. So I clicked on the... Sabaria. So this is the word Sabaria in the S to Sacularius section of the letter S. Okay, um, etymological word trees, that's just a gimmick. Um, I, know I hardly ever use it, but you know, you can click on one of these prefixes and see all this, the examples of words that it creates. Um, and the etymological dictionary is just if you're a really interested person and you want to know, oh gee, where did the word um, secret come from? You know, this is a Google Books book, and it's kind of clumsy to use, but, you know, you, by scrolling you can get to the right section of the dictionary and read um, opto, okay, from French, um, opto, um, you know, so that's the way it works. Anyways, so that's the, how you do a writing assignment. Hopefully you'll get them all right first. All, so everything is blue or green. And then hit submit work. If you don't, another way that your teacher might ask you to hurt, turn in the assignment is by hitting print work. And let's see, let me put some stuff in here. And so if I print work what this is going to do is it's going to put a big big ring around every word that I didn't fill in oh no it didn't okay I guess only in the culture assignments it does that normally it does okay so you can just print it up like that another option if you want to save it instead of using my saving system is you can say print to PDF save as PDF and then that'll actually turn it into a PDF and save and you can save it right on your computer you know somewhere and that that's another way here see here it came out over here and I can click on it and now I've got a record of my work but you can't really in a PDF can't be inserted back into this form see that's what it looked like so that the only way to insert things back into the form is to use the load button, save and load buttons. All right, so that's pretty much everything there is to know about um, how to use do a writing assignment. Oh yeah, when you're filling in this portion down here, when you see a number on the map like three, well I know two is Belgica, right up here, two is Belgica. So I'll hit two and tab and turn blue. So that's these number. so you want to put the number into the blank, that's how you do that. Um, pay a lot of attention also to the line underneath. That'll tell you the part of speech. And you want to like keep 
track of that with your right brain while your left brain is focusing on coming up with a word. So you want to think to yourself, okay, I'm in the nominative mode now, and just hit, put in nominative, 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 right on down the line until you come to the end of the arrow. Okay. Um, anything else? No, that's just about it. Um, this dash here between two words just means that these two words agree which means that they should be the same case and number and gender if it is a noun and an adjective or if yeah that's what it's going to be case number and gender so hopefully you know what case number and gender are if you don't know what case number and gender are then well you gotta look it up and how do you look it up well you go over to grant to abbreviations look up case number and gender and when you do that, you'll find out that, oh, gender is these colors. So if the first word was U-M, hmm, that means it was probably a neuter. In fact, it's gray here, so I know it's neuter. So for the word that agrees with it, Romanum, I want to use the gray thing because neuter Romanum would agree with neuter Imperium. You don't want to use feminine Romana with neuter and perium. So you want to match the color, um to um, so that they're the same gender, not different genders. Um, in later chapters, you would be able to also make plurals, like multi is a plural form. Um, so you won't learn that till later. But So for right now, you only have to worry about gender. But yeah, you would also want to make it match numbers, singular with singular, plural with plural, or case. So nom right now we're only worrying about nominatives and genitives and ablatives. No, nominatives and ablatives. Um, just so you know, ablative is when I put a macron on the end. And now you would learn this from either reading the book, which is like your row pa with an a. See, that's an ablative because it has a macron on the end. Now, it's not always a macron to a. Sometimes it's something different. And so you would have to go to your grammar charts and figure out, uh, okay, at the ablative line, if I'm dealing with first declension, uh, how do that would be A, but if it was a third declension, you can see it would be short E with no line over it. That means short. No line is short. Line over it is long. So sometimes we say long A, short E. So, yeah. So if the, your noun was down here at the accusative row, then so your adjective should also be at the accusative row. So that's basically how it works. You want to match the box. Whatever box the noun is, you want the ablative to be you want the adjective to be in the same box. That's how it works. Um, the best way, of course, to learn this is by watching the video under grammar in the syllabus. Um, yeah, you could learn it from the book, Lingua Latina per se illustrata. You could learn it by reading abbreviation that's in grammar charts so much till your head goes screwy, but the best way to learn it is, oh, I can't seem to go back there. I guess my session expired. I'd have to log back in. But the best way is to click the co on where all those coins were, click grammar, and that will bring up a video on YouTube where you can be taught in an orderly way how to do this portion of the assignment, you know, um, the writing assignments, that is. All right, so that's all. Uh, good luck. Um, if you don't know something, use the resources. Ask people. Um, you can always try e contacting me on Facebook, on the Right Latin website page on Facebook. Um, or if our messaging system is up, then you can go to the procurator to try contacting me. Or, um, you know, watch YouTube videos. That's a, thir a third option that you can use. So there's lots of things that will work for you if you want to try to find what you don't know. Um, of course, the best way is none of this. The best way is to just 
watch the grammar videos really well, pay attention, and then you should be able to come in here and just start doing the assignment without having to look up anything. All right, have a good day.